Nathaniel's preach. Aye. Nathaniel's preaching today on Shalom. Mm -hmm. Aye, so very excited. Do you mind if I pray for you? Of course. Thank you, Jesus, for Nathaniel. Thank you, Lord, that you're really going to speak through him today. I know it. Father, I pray that you fill him up to overflowing with your Holy Spirit this morning, God. I pray that you manifest yourself within him yeah. and that from his mouth he will just speak your heart this morning, Lord Jesus. Thank you for who he is. Thank you for what he brings to this church, this amazing bundle of joy and energy and compassion, Lord. We just love him so much. So I pray, God, that you would use him this morning, come and be with us, and yeah, that we learn more about Shalom. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you. Thanks. Shalom, everybody. Uh, what an honor to talk about Shalom in church. That's like a big responsibility. Shalom is a huge topic, it's massive, it's a big word for every person, it's uh, something different. Um, if you can all take a minute and close your eyes and ask God, what is Shalom for you? And then we can kind of like, um, yeah, see what's happened. Mm. Yeah, does anybody want to share? So it's like tranqui tranquility. Yeah, that's Shalom. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. Nice. Okay, nice. Yeah. So you're saying being at the present moment, basically. Yeah, yeah. Okay, nice. Douglas? Okay, okay. Hi, welcome. Uh, Doug? Okay. Okay. Nice. Thank you. Anyone else? Sam? Yeah. And I remember just sitting there with Amy Duncan and Kish and just actually seeing headphones on and talking. And it just draws me to knowing it was Jesus. Mm. And, it, and around was absolute like something out of Dawn of the Dead and Doom of War, all the stuff that you made out of it. Okay. That's good. Oh, I need to repeat what. Uh... Yeah, we can't hear. Because I'm too nervous, I don't hear. I just say like this with my head. Yeah, next one. <laughs> Confidence in Jesus. 
Mm. But he res he resurrected, did he? He resurrected. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna we're gonna do it short because it's hot. I, I love the weather, but I know uh, for you it's a bit hot for some people. I'm gonna keep it short. Sorry I miss your birthday, Josh. Uh, yesterday I was uh, spending time with God preparing for today. <laughs> um so basically, Shalom, it's massive, it's big, there's like a hundreds of war, uh, um, contests to it. I'm going to focus on three. Number one we're going to talk about today, it's Shalom Bait. It's home peace. Second one we're going to talk about Shabbat Shalom, the rest of peace. The third one we're going to talk about is Jehovah Shalom, which means being at the present moment, because the word Yehovah, Yahweh, it's basically presence Yahweh Ove Ove in Hebrew is present so that's what we're going to talk about last so Shlom Bait I grew up in Israel uh, in the south of Israel in Beersheba and since I remem remember myself I never experienced Shalom um, I uh, we talk about Shalom there is many 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 songs about Shalom Shabbat Shalom Shalom Aleichem peace on you peace be with you peace 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 but internally and externally, I never experienced shalom uh, till I found Jesus. So when I was five years old in 1991, there was a war um, uh, between I Iraq was sending bombs, scuds to Israel. And my mom and dad used to wake me up and said, put your mask on in the middle of the night. And I was young and I had a really cool mask, um, kind of like, with kind of like colorful, the older you get, the more boring it gets, but <laughs> we all used to come to our nursery and uh, like, how do you say, kindergarten, nursery, and, um, and everybody was like, look at my mask, look at my mask. I mean, it was joy, uh, it was joyful, but it wasn't peaceful. Um, my grandfather was in the Israeli army and he fought in many wars, and then my dad fought in uh, two wars, and. I heard in my house that basically, it, they always repeated that a good Arab is basically a dead Arab, which is funny because I'm an Arab Jew myself. So we are Arab Jew from, um, from Algeria, Tunisia, and Iraq. That's my ancestor. So we are Arabs, <laughs> but this is the, the lie that people believe. Um, yeah, my dad still uh, have trauma from the war in 1973 between Israel and Egypt. Um, and he wake up in the middle of the night and he said, Arabs, Arabs on us. And my grandfather uh, from the war in 56, Arabs, Arabs. And this is externally. But in my house, there was always, um, there was no shalom between my mom and dad. Because my dad had a lot of uh, debts. Uh, he's a very talented person. Um, he's very gifted. Um, but it wasn't well organized. So the bailiff used to come and knock in our door all the time, taking stuff. Uh, so every time there was a knock, immediately you jump, you don't know what's gonna come. So they come in, go into your room, take your computer, take the TV, uh, take stereo. Every time they pick up stuff. So sometimes what we used to do, we used to take all the things and put it in the neighbor. So our dad used to call us and said, the bailiff on the way, quickly, quickly. Me and my two sisters, tack, tack, tack put the stuff uh, in the neighbor and then we open, we have nothing. Um, but th this is true. And at some point, um, you know, I used to come back from school. You can feel the vibe in the house. My mom and dad were fighting all the time till some point when I was 15, my mom wanted a divorce from my dad. Um, and she said, I cannot handle it. There's too much debt. There's no peace because there's no peace. Not because she didn't love him or there was not money. There was he had a lot of income, but the way he handled it, I'm not criticizing him, I'm just, that's the way it was. And basically my sisters supported my mom and I supported my dad and then the house divided. Mom, why you want to divorce dad? Uh, you want to ruin the family? 
blah, blah, blah. And uh, I used to say to my dad, dad, why you don't divorce mom? She asked you to divorce. And he said, I love you, mom. I love you, mom. I love you, mom. It doesn't make sense. I'm gonna, we're gonna break up because of money, because uh, money will never be a problem. But we never had problem with money. Just the bailiff used to come in. And uh, one time I used to, I opened a letter and it was like 600,000 uh, shekels, which is 150,000 pound debt. Uh, to Joseph Elraz, which is my dad. So I used to come to my dad and say, what is this? And he said, ah, it's nothing. It's nothing, just a number. Ignore, don't open the letters. It's fine. And you will never, but basically food was always on the table. I had the best coaches. My sister had the best piano, uh, not piano, marimba, xylophone, best teachers. Um, it just wasn't peaceful. Eventually, my parents didn't get divorced, um, and I grew up also in a neighborhood of um, Ethiopian Jews, which is, uh, uh, came in 1985, um, and then there was Russian Jews, uh, Jews came in the 90s, and it was always divided, and Beersheba is not the best city in the world. Beersheba, it's in the south, it's not Tel Aviv, it's not Jerusalem, it's not even the north. It's the place where you get hardcore Arab Jews, you normally don't get European Jews there. The European wealthy Jews all in the center. Um, so, and I was in football and in football, there was a lot of uh, stress as well because I was a goalkeeper and I was always needed to keep Shalom. I needed to prevent goals to come in. Every time I let a goal came in, I didn't have any Shalom in me. So there was no Shalom then. In the future, I got into sales, but in sales also, if I made money, I had shalom, but if I didn't make, I didn't have shalom. Then I went to theater school. When I had a good performance, I used to get shalom because everybody were happy. And then if not, I used to get told off by the manager. And one time he told me that I need a psychiatrist, that I'm not, I cannot be on stage because I have problem, because I have mess and this and chaos. Um, I, I know this is going to be a bit chaotic for these 20 minutes, but it's chaos in the order. So what? <laughs> it's chaos in the order because I know where I want to get to. But in, before I didn't know where I want to get to, and it was all chaotic and drugs and alcohol and a mess. Till Jesus came in. And now I want to, to talk about this Shabbat Shalom because the Prince of Peace, Jesus, <clears throat> Uh, when he resurrected, he stayed with the disciple for 40 days. It says in on Acts chapter 1. After 40 days, so it means he resurrected after three days, then 40 days, that's 43 days. Then he lift up to the sky. Then there was another week. So we all, we're talking about here Passover to Shavuot. We're talking about the Feast of Week, that is seven weeks. I am... Um, counted six weeks Jesus was with them and then he left there was another week they should stay in Jerusalem and not move till the Holy Spirit come and then the Shabbat that basically we had I didn't have an inner peace and our family didn't have inner peace but in Israel you had on a Shabbat an external peace, which means in Beersheba, not many cars driving in some cities. There is no cars. Um, the shops are closed. Um, some people don't watch TV, don't turn the phone off, uh, turning the phone. It's, it's peaceful. Um, so externally, we had this one day of peace. If, let's say, you had argue with a person and he said, I'm going to beat you up, but after the Shabbat, because I'm not going to beat you up during the Shabbat, you wait till Sunday, I'm going to kick your ass, but on Shabbat, not. Um, so there was one day of peace. So that's what this end of week, but the seven week when the Holy Spirit came on the disciple, they had inner peace which means the shalom, the bite, home peace in the reserve, there was full. And then it says on Acts, uh, Acts chapter 2, the Jews and Arab were worshiping together. So Jews and Arab worshiping together once, the home peace in each other was fulfilled. Then people with their own families, and then Jews and Arabs can. So as a child, 
I always believe that peace, because they're talking about Shalom so much, and I have trauma from 1995 when Isaac Rabin, Itzhak Rabin, the Prime Minister of Israel, died. Do you remember, Sam? Uh, he wanted to do a peace process with Yasser Arafat. And I was 10 years old, and my mom woke me up and said, wake up, Nathaniel, our Prime Minister died, somebody shoot him. My sister got so upset, and she said, Nathaniel, let's go to, the, to Jerusalem to the funeral. And we went to the funeral of the prime minister and I was only 10 years old. It was such an experience because back then, looking back then, the nation of Israel, they want peace. And the Arabs, want, they want to have shalom. Everybody want to have shalom. And there was a million people in this, in this funeral. A million people came to give the honor to Isaac Rabin to not give up to the, to the peace process. So then my sister friend, which is a journalist, say, can you tell me about your experience when you go to the prime minister funeral? And I said my experience, and then I draw a picture, Shalom. So I wrote Shalom, and I did a frame of one, two, three, four. Just so simple, embarrassing for a 10 years old. It's more like a three or a, a picture. But, and I left it there to dry. And then uh, I went to outside to play football or something. When I came back, my mom told me, uh, she took your drone into the newspaper. I said, what? This is embarrassing. Man. <laughs> so there was an article, an article in 1995. It says Nathaniel Elra's story about uh, being in Jerusalem to Isaac Rabin, uh, Itzhak Rabin funeral. And this is his draw. Now, a lot of friends in the neighborhood were laughing and said, this is your draw, this is ridiculous, this is your draw. And I was so upset with my mom that she let her, because it's only said shalom, it's so... But this simplicity with the frame, I basically did one, two, three, four, wrote in green, I remember. Um, the shalom that we all prayed for, because to grow up in Israel, when you're only on the bus and you're full of anxiety, something's going to explode. You don't know, oh, is this, go this is a... Oh, this is a suicider. This is a suicide. It's like you develop anxiety outside the house, inside the house. Till the moment Jesus came, I did not experience shalom. Only with drugs, with alcohol, with gambling. I don't know what I did. Many things. I used to have a routine that if I drink enough whiskey and uh, sniff cocaine, I have a shalom for five minutes. <laughs> I remember I was like, oh, and then another line. And oh, oh I'm good now. Okay, five minutes. And okay, another whiskey. A little bit more whiskey. And I, so we always, I never experienced shalom till the time that I gave my life to Jesus in the Cozy Club with Mark Wadey. That's the moment I got real shalom that doesn't depend on anything. So shalom in my house brought and Claire three and a half years ago in my baptism prophesied and said, Nathaniel doesn't know it. And maybe you don't remember, but his baptism and his giving life to Jesus will make peace in his family. So the peace came in me now. Me and my family are so united. We've never been like that, so united ever. And I have a dream to do a ministry of Shalom Bait because the Shalom between Israel and Palestine, or Israel and the Arab nations in the Middle East is, is depend on the families. On the, if, if you have Shalom in, your, in yourself and then in the families, this is the way to the Shalom. And the last thing I want to talk about, it's, Jehovah Shalom Yehovah to be in the present moment. So yesterday, I didn't go to your birthday, but I shut my phone and took a walk to the river all the way to Hanam, and I was just full of the present moment. I didn't have any thoughts, nothing. I mean, it took a few, a few hours, but then it came. Nothing. When you don't have nothing in your head, no chaos, no thought, this is Shalom, and then you're full of joy. This is the link from last week, you see. And um, you're just full of joy. And then I find myself walking up and down and start to move my shoulder and do like this. And yeah, ba ba ya ba 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 Like daddy, 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 ba 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 It's daddy in Arabic. And I start, it's like, uh, I need to be really happy to start speaking in Arabic. Really happy. So people passing through because of a very na narrow pathway and they look at me and you know, there some of them, uh, you pass through the busies and on the busies people do parties and drugs and they think, what did this guy was taking? <laughs> what did this guy was taking? And I walk in and I just, being at the present moment and it's um, 
a lot of New York stuff and Buddhism always, um, shalom, um, shalom, um, this, and you try. I used to sit hours, um, 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 but it doesn't, it's not, it's not, it's five, it's a few minutes, it's not eternal. But now we live in the eternal shalom of God. So this is the tree of the shalom. God bless you. Have a, a shalom week and uh, hallelujah. And uh, no, now it's performance. I'll stop. I'll stop. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yes. I want to pray shalom uh, on everybody in here. I want to pray shalom my friend Shazda from Iran. I pray shalom in Iran, in the Middle East. Um, I pray it's going to be shalom in Iran, in Iraq, in Afghanistan, in all of this chaotic area, in Egypt, in Jordan, in Syria, in Lebanon. Um, yeah, Father, we pray shalom on us. Shalom on us as well. That even if there is no external conflict between countries in, in England, but we also need a shalom in our family. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 amen.